Yeah. Hello, everyone. For those joining us in person and online, don't forget to sign in. Um, the sign in sheet is in the chat. Thank you, Alyssa, for dropping that. So be sure to sign in to get those activity points. But um, I also want to now introduce our career specialist, Kelsey Hugh. Yay. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Tiffany. So um, my name is Cassie, like uh, Tiffany just said, I am the social sciences career specialist. So that means that if you are studying psychology or anything under the social sciences, I am the career specialist that you'll see primarily throughout your time at UCR. Um, and a little more about me is that I recently joined UCR in August. And before then I worked at Pasadena City College and I got my master's degree in college counseling and student development at Azusa Pacific University. And then I also went to Cal Poly Pomona for my undergrad in um, organizational communication. So um, for me, I really um, took advantage of the career center when I was an undergraduate student because I didn't know what was going on. And when I walked through the doors, um, I was uh, met with a really lovely career specialist that just helped me. Um, improve my resume a little more. And I think that I carried a lot of shame and a lot of guilt for not knowing things because I came from an immigrant family and felt like I had to know everything or that I would disappoint my parents and everything. But um, that wasn't the attitude I was met with when I was So I just want to carry that same um, sentiment that I was given um, from the lovely folks at the career center I went to and just continue that, um, just spreading the, the knowledge of the career center and how we can help. So um, how we can talk about today is resume writing. Um, this is what we're gonna cover. The first thing is what exactly is a resume and what does the resume format look like? And as well as the resume content, tailoring your resume, and then a checklist to make sure that everything is good. Um, and then we'll also have a little resume activity to look over your resume by applying the tips we talked about today, as well as some next steps. Um, before we dive into uh, what exactly is a resume, um, you can see that I don't have the, the word CV on here, but I do wanna clarify that CV is curriculum life high. And what that translates to is life work. So it's gonna be a little different than a resume because the resume is going to be um, specifically for like a job application or something else that where you need to build that network. Um, whereas curriculum by Kai is for usually applying for grad school and they wanna know your whole life's work, which mainly includes your academic projects. And I'll show you some examples of that afterwards as well. Um, so let's go ahead and define um, what you'll be learning today. So we do have these competencies at the bottom, which is career and self-development as well as communication. And they are from the NAEP Career Readiness Competencies. Um, these are competencies that um, employers tell us that they are looking for from students um, entering the workforce. So we make these workshops based on those competencies. So these are the two ones that you're gonna get at the end of the presentation. And then what you'll also be able to learn and take away today is the ability to communicate what a resume is and why it's important for your career development. And then you're going to be able to identify the format and content ideas to implement onto your own resume. And then lastly, you'll understand why and how to use a resume for different topics and things that you need them for. So what exactly is a resume? So you can see there's kind of like this visual representation here, but I like to say that a resume is really similar to like an advertisement. So think about all the ads you've ever seen in your life. Um, which ones leave the most impact on you? Um, it's probably the ones where you're able to um, relate to what they're trying to say. And they thought of you as a target audience. So that's what your resume kind of is. It's an advertisement and marketable um, document about yourself. So if you like ever like watch um, like different channels that maybe you don't usually, like for me, sometimes like, I see like the golf channel because like that's what my dad watches. And then the ads on there are so different than what I usually see when I watch like ads on YouTube. Because like the ads are all like about um, like medication and like things that can be like useful for like the elderly community. 
And that, that means that they really targeted their audience for who's watching the golf um, tournament. So um, because they're targeting who's going to watch it, they're making the resume more, um, they're making that the product more desirable to the person watching. So it's just that same idea with the resume. You want to keep in mind who's going to be reading it because um, you want them to buy into who you are, who you're marketing yourself to be. So on top of that, it's also all these different um, shapes that you see here. It's your first impression, and that's what I mean by like kind of like an advertisement. You um, you want to grab the person's attention, and the best way to do that is by uh, making sure that your first impression is good. And then it's also an overview of your experience. Um, and then remember that it's a changeable document. So it's okay to change things up for it. What I recommend to do is actually make a master resume um, and just include all the different experiences you've done throughout your life. Um, it can be things from high school and things you do inside of class, outside of class, just like everything that you um, put yourself and put yourself into and invest energy into. Um, you can make like a master resume of all these experiences and then copy and paste um, according to what kind of job you're applying to. So it's a changeable document. And then it's important to also update it on a regular basis, as well as provide um, just specific information. And then qualifications and credentials are basically the degree you're learning right now. So the most popular format for resume is the chronological format. And we recommend this for um, entry level students because um, you're just starting your career. So it's it's um, most like it's most clear to read the resume when it's in chronological because um, you'll have your most recent experience at the top, which will be the most relevant, and then um, the experiences you had afterwards. So um, usually you always remember the thing you um, start to read rather than like the middle part. So that's why we um, recommend that you put it in chronological format, which just means like, like I just said, most present on top and then the things you're getting um, more on the bottom. And then um, it also effectively allows you to highlight those most relevant experiences, like I said. Yeah, no problem. And then here are the different sections of a resume. Um, we have the contact information right on top. An objective is optional. Um, and then education. So education should be on the top because um, most of the time they're looking for people with degrees or gaining their degrees soon. So that's why you want to put it um, right underneath your contact information. And then underneath that can be your experience. And the experience you have, you could see on there, they label it as marketing experience, leadership experience, and work experience. And you might be thinking, what's the difference between all those things? But it goes back to what I said about the marketing aspect. Um, they read the job description. They saw that they are looking for a marketing um, experience. So they labeled and um, advertised it as marketing experience. But they also see that um, people are looking for leadership experience too, people that have been in leadership roles. So that's why they labeled it leadership experience as well. And then work experience is also relevant, but then just not as much as the first two. And then on the bottom, we have skills. So skills is good for um, listing the programs that you know and social media, you know how to use and your languages. You're not going to want to put the humanistic skills on there, such as teamwork, um, collaboration, um, good at listening. You want to give context to those skills because they're very humanistic. and um, if you just put that in the skills section, it's a little um, confusing in like what kind of context or you've been able to utilize your skills. So the best way to put those type of skills is actually in your bullet point statement. So avoid putting the humanistic skills at the bottom. Just keep, keep it the technical skills instead. As you can see, um, kind of it's kind of small on there, but it says the programs they know, such as Adobe, MATLAB, Microsoft Office. Um, and for y'all, you can call it the, um, the SPSS, the research program that you have, um, and other certifications. Um, and then coursework. So we do recommend you put that underneath the education because that's where you got the information, or that's where you got the, the learning for that coursework at NCR specifically. Um, 
I think I see something in the chat. Let me go double check that. Okay, it's the sign in. And then number seven is campus involvement, volunteer, extracurricular activities. So um, you see like that there's not like a color for that, but that's because they actually did embed it on here, but underneath the different categories. So they have campus involvement through leadership experience by being the vice president. Um, they have volunteer experience through um, marketing experience. So that's how you start um, thinking of more than just like jobs you got paid for. It doesn't have to be that in order to be labeled as experience because it's experience all the same for you to be investing your time in something and continually getting better at it. So we do recommend you think about these things that um, should count as experience. And then here are other sections of your resume. Um, this is what it could look like when you want to include projects and papers, uh, the title of the project, whether it was individual or group work, and then the context of your work and the overview. What did you do? How did you do it? And what was the outcome? So um, we recommend you put in projects because um, this is where like maybe you have some of the experience of um, being a front desk worker or a cashier. And in those experiences, you're able to um, work well with others. You're able to handle um, customers during um, high stress situations. But how do you explain that you know how to use SPSS or these other technical skills that um, the jobs you're applying to is looking for? You would show that through the research projects you've done or the papers that you've written um, where you are conducting that research um, or um, and partnering in a project with a faculty member. So we do recommend that you actually put this on your resume too, and you can label the section research experience if you like for class projects. Um, so this would also count as experience, and you can see uh, there are other things here too that might be not as related to the psychology majors, but in case it is, you can also include um, performances you've done, exhibitions, or if you've been invited to talk in conferences, you can also include that as well. And then you can see at the bottom, it even says your thesis and capstone. And then you can see on the bottom here, it says you could see your career specialist, which is me. Um, you can see them um, through an appointment, or you can just stop by during our express drop-in and have a 15 minute discussion about your resume, just in case like, you need it last minute and you don't have time to do the appointment. Um, you can also stop by. We have drop-in appointments every day. Um, and then you can go ahead and see like if it makes sense, like all these things to put together. Does it make sense for me to like highlight these things for the job I'm applying to or the thing I need it for? And then this is um, a chart that I really like to show everyone because um, this is taken from that professional association I mentioned earlier, um, MACE, and it is a partnership between colleges and um, the top employers, um, including one yeah, from the Fortune 500. And we basically have conversations with them annually about what they're looking um, for from their entry level um, applicants and what they are looking for from their college from, from our college students. So we meet together to make sure like we're on the same page and communicating the right information that students need. Um, so you can see on the screen that these are the top key attributes employers are seeking. And something that really is interesting to me is that leadership is like the lowest one on here when that used to be the highest one um, just a couple of years ago. So you can see that the highest one now is problem solving and um, analytical skills, um, strong work ethic. These things, um, they communicate more of like a teamwork mentality, like knowing how to work on a team and serve the team well, instead of just being like every person for themselves. So I think that's really interesting that like our society is like shifting a little to like value a team member and celebrate the team wins rather than continuing like this, um, this person's really good and they're only gonna think about themselves because they're, They've shown that in the past. Um, leadership's so important, like you see it's one of them on here, but it's just not the most important like it was just a couple years ago. So um, this is helpful for when you're passing those bullet point statements. If you're not sure like what to center, like the impact around or what the purpose of why you're writing a bullet point statement, think about um, these skills here, like problem solving, collaboration, 
how do you show that you've done these things in your past job? Like you could use these kind of like as the, the thesis for the bullet points you're writing. And then here's an example of the heading and contact information. Um, this example of more white space versus less white space. And white space just means that um, there's like more empty space around. So we recommend the bottom if you don't have as much experience, but you want to make sure it's a full page. Um, so that's good for if you um, don't need to save as much space. But then the top is good for saving other space. So if you're like now pushing off to the second page, um, the first is good for that. And then you could see that um, they have their UCR email, the phone number, and then their street address. You could also just put the city like this one here. Um, and then you could also put your LinkedIn if you like. And if you don't know this, you can also edit your URL in LinkedIn. So if you go in LinkedIn, you can just type in your name and then that can be used to edit your URL. So that, that's like a free thing that you can do on LinkedIn. It's like, it's just on the right hand side, you could edit it so that it looks cleaner when you put it on your resume and it's easier to remember. And then for your education, uh, we recommend um, that you put this section because this is what they're looking for. Typically, like does the degree match what um, the employer is um, trying to hire for? And I would actually um, spell it out, so Bachelor of Arts instead of BA. And then you can see that they uh, bolded that section. And then if you earn any associate's degrees, it's also good to write that as well. Um, and then underneath there, you see the relevant coursework. It's not every class they've ever taken, but the classes that make sense for the job you're applying for. Um, and then we do recommend you put the most recent degree first. You don't have to put um, high school unless you um, just started UCR. Uh, we recommend that you phase out of putting high school experiences um, by your junior year. So the end of your sophomore year. Um, so if you feel like the majority of your experience right now is high school, um, try to think about how you're going to continue to like do more experiences on campus um, throughout your next two years here. And then we do recommend you list schools in which you receive the degree for just so it's like less messy. Um, the GPA is optional, but if you have a good one above 0.5, we do recommend you put it. And you could also put um, study abroad in this section too, like under relevant coursework. And then as for your experience, I want to go a little deeper into what I mean about um, the how does the volunteer like fit as experience and how does um, stuff on campus fit as experience. So these are the different things that can count as experience. Um, it doesn't have to be an official internship. It can actually be a volunteering you've done just with your community, class projects you've done, labs you've done, even just major assignments. Um, Presentations or public speaking is also important to showcase. So these are different things you can consider putting on your resume if you think that this will help show you as a promising candidate um, when the person's reading your resume. Because if they're looking for someone that has strong communication skills, um, then you can actually talk about how you've done public speaking or how you've been able to problem solve within a group project. Things like that will showcase the evidence to how you are good at um, having strong communication skills. And it does not need to be paid for it to be considered as experience. And then um, we have some examples of how you can um, expand a little more on the bullet point statements. So instead of just writing that you're responsible for sales, um, you're gonna be more specific with it. You're gonna talk about um, the action that you did for the sales that you're responsible for. Um, and then you can see that um, with, instead of responsible for treating students, you could say establish positive rapport with 15 sixth graders through effective usage of technology in the classroom through 2020 to 2021 distance learning. So it's a, it's a bullet point statement that helps explain further, giving the right amount of information, but not going too in depth to it like it's a whole paragraph. So that's what we recommend. And I will say that um, the most important thing to think about is the impact of what you did with the duty you had. Um, don't think about the duty itself. Think about what you accomplished through the task you did. Um, so what does that look like specifically? 
it's going to be applying the tar method. Um, so I put that there. Um, so this is how you actually write the bullet point statement. So you apply the task, action, and result formula. It doesn't always have to include every, like all three of these things, but this will help you uh, bolster the bullet point a little more. So the task is going to be what you were assigned to do. The action was how you carried out that task. And then the result is the impact of what you did. What what did you do differently than someone else that could have done the job? That's how you're putting together these different things. Um, and then on the next slide, you will see how um, each one. So the red is um, the task, the blue is the action, and the green is the result. So you can see like some of them, they don't have like, um, they don't have every single color, but that's okay because it just helps you expand a little further on the bullet point statement. So you could see deliver academic support for students encountering academic difficulty to aid in skills and study habits to achieve success in their undergraduate education. So that really talked about what made a difference with you being there. You didn't just show up and see the students, you help them achieve success in their undergraduate education. So that's you branding yourself a little further, showing why you are an asset to the person that's reading your resume. Um, and then, yeah, you can, I think that this, these slides are going to be shared with you after too, so you can feel free to like look a little further into how you can um, kind of bolster um, your bullet point statements a little more. But I always think that it's helpful to just keep it concise, but with the right detail. So it's kind of a balance of both, and this is the best um, option that we suggest to our students because it provides the detail um, without like going too in depth into it. And then also, um, if you can implement some numbers into your bullet points too, it also paints a better picture. So you could see collaborate on a team of 25 plus peer mentors instead of just collaborate on a team, you actually put numbers to it so that um, you help the person know like um, how many people did you work with? And then they also list first and second year UCR students. So they specify like who exactly are UCR students or because if you just wrote tutor students in mathematics, um, they might not know like who it is specifically. So if you put first and second year UCR students, now they know that you have experience working with the first year student. And that is a really pivotal time in the UCR um, or any college experience. So that is important to know because you're being that mentor for them. You're helping them through um, different things as they're transitioning from high school to college. And then we always recommend that you start off with passion birds. So if you need this, um, I can pass this out at the end, but it's an action bird for your resume. So if you see, if you find that you really want to talk about your research skills, but you don't know how else to talk about it, um, there's a word for it. So this is helpful when like talking about your health and skills and not just like saying help for everything, you can talk about um, using these action birds instead. So when you're helping, it's like, Clarify, coach, counsel, facilitated. So feel free to apply some of these words to um, the bullet point so that you can mix up um, the vernacular of what you're using. And then that's what that looks like right there. Um, and then, yeah, just choose words that really highlight your skills and make them look like you did a lot at your job. Um, that is a time that is a um, position that you invested your time into, and it did make a difference that you were there. And then here's a slide that will explain the difference between um, experiences and activities. Experiences are going to be more like um, explaining with the bullet point statement, but maybe you're part of a club where like, you just show up to it and there's not much to say about it. Um, to, but you do want to include that in your resume. You can just include it simply like this. The the membership you have there, the name of the club at UCR, and then the city that it's in. And then you see on the side, they also put um, the time in which they were in the club. So the activity is just like, um, if you don't have enough to talk about, where, whereas like a whole experience is something that you can put the bullet points about pretty much. 
And then your resume in action. So like I said, you really want to make sure that you're making your resume for the right audience. So try to tailor it as much as possible to what the job description is asking for. Or after you have a conversation with a faculty member, like what kinds of key traits are they um, sticking out to you? Like they, what, types of, what types of strengths are they looking for? And then take notes about that and make sure that you include that on your resume and show proof to how you do those things. Um, so really try to tailor your, doc your documents towards the job you're looking for or the position you need on campus. Um, and show that you understand the industry by using the same kind of language that they use, like in their, um, like on their website, in the job description, or just like the things they're learning in class. Like, what kinds of words have you not heard before? And like, everyone seems to be using when it comes to the experts. And then here's just a resume checklist to make sure your resume is good to go, uh, one page maximum. Uh, we recommend this for students that. Um, don't have a, um, much to talk about. So two pages is okay if you like are really heavily involved on campus and you have a lot to say and it's all relevant towards like um, the grad school you're applying to or like the job you want. Um, but we typically uh, recommend one page for entry level students. Um, 10 seconds at a glance, that means that most employers or people that we resume only really look at it for 10 to 15 seconds. So think about that and Make sure that you're making that you're highlighting the relevant experiences, bolding the things that they need to know first. Um, using the industry language, like I mentioned, um, tailoring the resume to the position, um, all relevant experiences, and um, avoid using personal pronouns. So always start with the action verbs. Don't say um, I had and like me, my, our. Just um, go straight into the bullet um, the bullet point format of like the action verb and the result. Um, and then make sure that there's no um, typos as well. So doing like a final read through, asking um, a fellow person to look it over, making sure there's no grammar spelling mistakes um, and then upload it onto Word and PDF if you can, because um, most of the time, um, if you don't put and build your resume on a, um, like a Word document, then and do it through a template, it can be scanned incorrectly. And if you're applying to a popular position, um, that's how they are actually recruiting people. They just like put all the resumes through like a scanning system. And if it's not in a Word or PDF format, it can mess up like the way they scan the words. And um, the way what they're looking for when they're scanning the words is the keywords on the job description. So that's why we really recommend you tailor your resume to what they're looking for because they don't even look at like the majority of resumes that get submitted to them sometimes if they're like really famous companies that get a lot of um, resumes um, through like their search. So this is the best way to make sure that your resume gets looked at. And then here are things to not include in your resume, um, a picture, your age, marital status, um, and then other demographic information. You don't have to put your gender and things like that. And do not add your references unless they specifically ask for it. But if they do ask for it, it would simply be a separate document, not exactly on the resume itself. So this is like a section for you to try it, but I think um, you will do that in a second as well, like after this, but I just wanna make sure you have um, the information on knowing when the office hours are, the express counseling, um, it's going to be on the Career Center website, and you can upload your resume as well on Handshake, and that would be able for us to see it on easily, but also for employers to see it. So these are like kind of next steps you can do after you like fix up your resume a little more, um, and then in the important resources we have here is that we have some resume examples. So I want to make sure that like I show them to you so that you have something to go off of. So I'm gonna go Career Center UCR, and then I'm gonna give you um, just kind of the guide that we have. So students, and I also sent the links to Tiffany as well, so I think she can send this out to you. But under getting hired resumes and cover letters, we do have a guide. If you've never written a resume before, if you just need to brush up on it, um, this is a good place to start because it gives you a worksheet of how to start plugging in all the information I was talking about. This is also where the action verbs are. 
and then the tailoring documents guide. So if you need some more help in like making sure that's good. And then here's some resume examples for every major. So I'll go ahead and click on psychology. So this is example of what a psychology major at UCR has submitted before and that has allowed us to put this on here. You can see the things that they highlight that they think is important for the job they're applying to. Um, you see that they put awards and honors here too. So that's an example. Um, and then as for CVs, I do wanna show you some examples of that too. And in CVs, like I said, they're gonna be more academic based. Um, you can include your work experience too, but since um, it's usually for graduate programs, um, it's gonna be helpful to talk about all the academic work that you've done as well, um, since you spent like four years in college doing that. So we do have some examples through um, the career resources on the CNAS page. Uh, we're still working on the CHAS examples, but I, I sent the direct links to Tiffany too. But this is where you can find examples of CVs of undergraduate students. So you could see here that this is what they highlight, um, their research interests and their research experience. And if you don't know this, you could also actually look up, um, you can look up any professor you have as well and find their CV through the UCR website. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Annie Dita because I presented for her class today and you can click on her profile and then it will actually link her CV. So if you're curious about like her, what experiences she's done before and like how she got to where she's at and how she's formatted her CV, um, you can look at that. It's like through here, this is what um, a person that has finished their PhD program look like and like works at UCR. You can do this with any professor that works at UCR. So I just wanted to make sure that you see this as well. Um, but this is like, like I said, like this is helpful for like the graduate um, people that are interested in graduate school and just seeing like how it's helpful. And then also it will make it less intimidating to talk to some of your professors. If you have something to go off of based on their CV, you can ask them like, I see you've done some research on this, like can we have a conversation about it? Um, and that's kind of like a point of um, conversation for your office hours. So I just wanted to make sure you um, had those resources on you on how to find the resume guide information, as well as um, just briefly touching on the CV as well so that we clear up um, what a CV is and how it's different from a resume and how they're kind of similar, but then also like used for different things. So yeah, um, is there any questions? I know we went through a lot. Yeah. So I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, I saw a TikTok that they say like once you're like away from college and after you graduate a little bit to not put your year anymore. So what do you think about that? Yeah, so that is like when you are no longer entry level and you are um, like more established in your job. Let's say you work at a company for 10 years, then yeah, the first thing they're not going to want to know is that like you're, you graduated 10 years ago. They want to know like the supervision that you now do at your company, like what types of teams you work on at your company. So I want to take out the year altogether, but just move education to the bottom. But because like, you are all like starting <laughs> like your career, um, we say to put education on top, but, um, and then it also depends if you're in academia and you're constantly getting more graduate degrees, then it's important to put that at top still because you're getting more degrees. But if you decide to just do industry route, then you would put industry like more on top, but that's if you like are interested in like moving to different job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's check the chat just in case. Okay, thank you for putting those links in the chat. Um, if there are any questions, maybe I could um, hear like, what was the takeaway someone learned from what we shared today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess what the big factors that I put in Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, just like the bullet points being really important when you tailor the document. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was <clears throat> I thought it was interesting that you said we can include as much as like major school assignments mm -hmm. as experience because I don't know. Like I thought we could only include like a 
official jobs. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And like, that's like probably the most common question I get when I meet with students, like, how do I get an internship when like, I haven't had any other internships? Um, just remember that like, they are trying to recruit like students and they're aware that most of them don't have like that industry experience already. So they're recruiting students. So what are you doing as a student? You're doing projects and stuff like that. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. I actually have a question. Mm -hmm. So at what point should you stop including like for example, like let's say I have like mm -hmm. volunteer experience from like 2017 that I like, you know, I think it's probably a good thing to have, but yeah. is it better to have stuff that's more up to date, but maybe not as impressive? Or is it better to have something that's more impressive but it might be like a little out of time? Yeah, so it kind of goes back to like whether it's relevant or not to what you're applying for. Um and typically like rule of thumb is like to phase out things that happened five years ago, but if they were like, you know, like more like insignificant things of like, oh, like I used to tutor like my family member five years ago. And like now, like, I don't think that's like as important to put on here because I I've done like more important stuff, then you can phase that out. But maybe you've done like really um, pivotal stuff in your community, like you built up like a community service um, group, like you would still want to put that on there because that's still a group that like exists today or like you still learn a lot and draw a lot from that experience. So um, I think as long as like you're reading at the job descriptions, seeing like what's most relevant towards it, um, it's best to put educational stuff um, itself because that's directly linked to the job you're applying for. Um, but if the other things like communicate that you like know how to do the things you're looking for better too, it's good to put that. But if you think that the academic things you've done is like more important, like being part of this club, then having that on here instead. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, what templates did you say? Where can you get the templates in the time? Yeah, so um, it's gonna be through the, uh, the Career Center and um, through um, the resume guide. But I would say like, if you're looking for like a uh, example of a format to follow, try to follow the, the example resume here. So it's gonna be students and then getting hired resumes. But I think Tiffany will also give you the direct links for stuff. Um, and then the resume guide will be like, it's it's kind of a lot of pages, so that's why I don't want it to feel overwhelming, but there is like a worksheet in there that will help you bring out the resume more. But the examples itself will be helpful for like following formats. Yeah, yeah, like having all your students on one, and then um, maybe the things you've applied for, like naming the resume after that thing, and then like putting them into folders and stuff is helpful, like to not have everything be lost after. Yeah. And also on this um, page, we also have cover letter. So we didn't cover that today, but if you're interested in how to write one, we have that resource on the same exact page. Yeah. So someone in chat asked for double majors <clears throat> or minors, how would we add that to the education section? Yeah, so you would actually just put it um, like underneath your bachelor's. And I think there was an example of the associates, but you just put the major you think like it's most important on top first, like Bachelor of Science in X and then Bachelor of Arts in Y, and then you put your associates underneath that. So just like all in that same section of education, you list it out. Yeah. Any last question? Okay. Um, yeah. Like, what, um, um, what is a cover yeah, so a cover letter is something that um, employers sometimes ask for if they are trying to narrow down candidates and they want to get a feel for who you are before interviewing you. So um, it typically will include um, kind of like 
you expanding further on what's already on your resume. You don't want to repeat what's on your resume, but it would it should go hand in hand, like bread and butter. Um, you're talking about like your strengths and skill sets that you weren't able to like really like expand deeper upon in your resume. So just like a really short paper that you're writing with like intro, body, body, conclusion. And then like um, at the end, you're just asking for them to like consider you. Yeah. Okay, great. So I think it's now gonna transition to the time um, with your club itself, but I had a really great time just presenting to you all today and just thank you for listening and please take the, um, the action verse if you need a physical copy. Um, and then you can always feel free to email me if you'd like, um, cassie.vu at ucr.edu. And I think it'll also be shared through Tiffany. So I'm a career specialist for all y'all, I think. So you can feel free to schedule an appointment with me if you'd like. Um, if you go on Handshake, I should be the only option unless you have another major, then you have two options. Um, but you can meet with me, ask me any questions. I can answer quick questions through email too. But thank you so much for inviting me to SciKai and just meeting all of you virtually and in person. Thank you. Thank you. So um, like as she mentioned,